Hey, welcome back. This is uh, the, just the last video. It's kind of a recap of what I learned and what I would do better next time, uh, where I'm going to go from here, things like that. So yeah, the, the main thing that I picked up from this is, especially after recording it, you really learn like how bad some of your practices are as well. Uh, just how to structure things. Like a lot of the times I'll, I'll build something like I did in this series, just on the fly as I go and you know later go and refactor everything to make it better but when you're you're actually like watching it back uh, I really need to start focusing on on making a good structure to begin with like the the menus and the buttons not working and stuff like that earlier was a, a good side of that that I saw uh, so next time I'll, I'll focus on planning that more ahead as well as keeping different types of like game managers and score managers and stuff separate from each other. Uh, if we would have kept it all separate, wouldn't run into that problem there either uh, because the, the menu manager and the, the score manager were on the same. If they were separate, we would have never had those bugs to begin with. So I'm going to look into a lot of that for next time, just kind of planning ahead. Uh, never used that binary formatter before, so that's really going to be handy for my games. Just being able to save any kind of data you want, loading it in, uh, doing whatever you want with it anytime. Uh, it's a lot more versatile than player prefs and a lot more secure. So I'm definitely going to be, be using that a lot more in the future. Uh, Text Mesh Pro was another one I've always kind of put off learning it, even though it looks so much better. Uh, now that I finally like took the time, it's so simple to use. And yeah, now that I took the time, that's all I'm going to use. There's no point using the normal text anymore. Uh, same with the, the input fields was a new one. I never really used those before to take in data. Uh, the one thing I, I might do if I keep making arcade games though, uh, I might make a little like exportable module I can make for a, a high score system and uh, I wouldn't mind making it uh, controller friendly. So it's like an arcade where it'll cycle through the, the letters where you can pick your initials. So I might try doing that in a, a series too, and then, and then yeah, I'll just export it as a little custom Unity package, and I can just load it into any game I make in the future. So that might be a little standalone series I actually do, and then as I continue, we can just import that in. Uh, bubble sort was a new one too. I never really had to sort data before, uh, at least not on that level where you have to actually sort it by value and keep it... Uh, keep it in a certain order and remove the ones that are not in that order. So basically anything under the top five scores. Uh, that, that was a lot easier than I expected to. So going forward, that'll be a lot easier to do. Uh, video editing and audio, all of that was completely new. I've never really made videos before. So uh, learning how to use editing tools. I was using Lightworks for all of this, but uh, there's a good Humble Bundle on with Vegas, so I think I'll pick that up and then I can actually start recording in, in 1080p. Uh, the free version of Lightworks only lets you do 720 and uh, the first few videos were pretty blurry. If uh, Hopefully that'll be fixed in the future, but it was a problem with I was using OBS to, to do the recording and it was recording at 1080p, but then the down converting in Lightworks was making it look terrible, so I had to start recording it at 720 so Lightworks wouldn't mess it up. And there was a lot of issues there, but if I buy that, that Vegas, that should all go away. And and uh, throughout the series, I think I got a lot better at it. So it's looking better. Same with audio and just playing around with mic placement, finding different ways to do things, different ways to mic it. So I think it's sounding better now. Hopefully this is where I'll keep it. And then, yeah, as far as where to go next, uh, I'm just kind of using this whole series to, to get better at making like old 2D style games. So a lot of the focus I want to start doing is, is basic enemy AI and like 2D game AI type stuff, not your typical, you know, uh, uh, FPS shooter kind of AI. So a lot of stuff where it's like different states. Um, I think the next one I might do to keep it simple is I, I might actually do a simple tic-tac-toe game and make a computer opponent. So I was researching a bit on that and the different algorithms and stuff they use, but I might even keep it simpler than that and just make my own basic AI. So it won't be, you know, the most efficient patterns, but I'll make it where you can actually play against a computer. And then from there I can 
step up to, to more complicated enemy AI. I was thinking making a battleship game might be good too, like the old board game. Uh, just for simple enemy AI and guessing and playing against a computer. So I, I think I'll, I'll start doing those. I, I want to eventually work up to something like Pac-Man where you actually have enemy states where they're like attacking state, fleeing state, um, things like that, like patterns that they follow, uh, being able to follow a, a level map. So I, I don't want to jump into that too early. Like I, I've done a lot of games more complex than that, but I want to understand the underlying concept of how these old games worked a lot more before I go on. And then, yeah, I was watching a lot of documentaries and stuff like that on this too. And uh, some of them were pretty crazy. Like there was one, I think it was just called High Score. It was actually a guy competing for the the world high score of Missile Command. It was crazy. He played like 30 hours straight and then the arcade reset on him. And And I think he had 30 million high score and the highest was 60, I believe. So he was only like halfway there and the guy already spent like over 24 hours playing a game and yeah it's just crazy uh the one thing i should have probably made on this though was the iconic uh and the end screen with the uh the flashing red and blue the end that pops up on the screen a hexagon uh, that was pretty iconic for this game just because everything else always said game over and this one was the end like the world was over so at some point i think i'm going to come back and i'll just polish this one up a bit you know, put the enemy bombers, the, the cruise missiles, things like that in. But uh, if I do that, I'll, I'll probably just put like an updated video at the end showing like my polished version at the end. But I don't see a need to actually go through all the details of that unless somebody asks me to. Um, but yeah, I think that's where I'll go from here. So I think it'll probably be, probably be tic-tac-toe next. Keep it really basic. It'll basically just be using the, the UI system for the whole game board and just trying to learn simple computer AI enemies. And yeah, we'll see from there and then start making some more videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.